With the newer capability of taking an estimate and turning it into either a purchase order or taking an estimate and turning it into an invoice, and you can actually do both, before we can really dive into some of the details with that, it's important to explain items within QuickBooks Online and how they specifically work. So I went up to my gear icon, I can go to my all my lists or my products and services. And there have been a lot of changes to QuickBooks Online inventory items, such as the ability to use categories and especially to use like bundles. But what's the most important is when you're looking at items is whether they are two-sided or not. And by two-sided, think of the, the idea you're gonna have a sales front uh, or a front facing description for client facing description. And then you'd have a purchase description, which would be more on your purchase order, your bill, the stuff that you would see. Because these are two totally separate descriptions that go to two totally different types of uh, form, they don't interchange quite like desktop used to. What I mean by that is if you have, if you take the time to put additional information into your description on your client facing invoice, all of those details will not be on the purchase order on the purchase facing you know, side of the, uh, the details. Um, along with that, of course, is just as important as the cost versus the retail amounts. So with items, if you put a cost in, you will be able to track that expense based off of that cost. So if you have something then you're using it for a variable um, cost all the time, you don't want to have a fixed price onto it. You want to be very careful. Um, and then you also want to make sure that the account that you're assigning it to is the appropriate account. We've seen a lot of issues where people's books can be just drastically thrown off by improper categorization with the account type. What is kind of nice is with the inventory items, if you need to go in and you have to make an adjustment to something like that, it will give you a pop-up that asks if you'd like to do it, you know, going backwards as well. Um, so for the example we have on the screen at the moment, I created a sectional sofa showing that you can put on an image if you'd like to. The images don't go onto any of the documents yet, but hopefully in the future they will. You will have a name for your product, a SKU number, as well as you can do a category. Um, a good example of this would be if you're using multiple different companies uh, for couches, you could actually do a category as a company and then do all the items below it, or you could do a category as sofa and then the different types, whatever's gonna be best for your situation. Um, then you would have your sales information. The sales information will be, you could take advantage of the description by trying to populate as much of the information that's gonna be the most, I guess you could say the least common denominator that would always need to be there. And then you can just add or type in the extra details that you would need when you need it. That will help cut down on some of the data entry. Um, as we saw the sales price versus rate, um, QuickBooks Online does not handle percentages well. So the way if you're trying to do a rate, you need to look at is look at as if the quantity of one is 100%. And let's say you wanted to do 25%, you would put 0.25. So you can keep that in mind. Uh, once you've created an item, you go through and you can save a new, save and close. Um, I should back up a little bit and also share that there are the different types. You have an inventory item, non-inventory item, service, and then bundle, which is just not showing at the moment. Your inventory items are the ones that you're going to be tracking the quantity. So you'd be doing your physical counts monthly to make sure that you have the right amounts all the time. Non-inventory items would be more of something where you're buying, either you're buying something and it's going right out, so you're not keeping it in stock. You're not worried about that as a potential asset at the end of a period. Uh, and then your service would be services that you're providing. Um, other examples of non-inventory would be for uh, shop supplies, as I like to call them. So if you have the little parts that are necessary to complete the bigger project, but you're not counting the stuff, that's another good example of non-inventory items. The primary difference between QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online when it comes to estimates and uh, invoicing or estimates and purchase orders is the description or the information that's on an estimate 
in desktop will transfer straight to a purchase order with the same language on it in comparison to a QuickBooks Online. The information from an estimate will transfer over whatever the product description is instead of the client facing description. To try to better explain what I'm talking about, we're looking at this estimate in QuickBooks Online. So the client facing sales description, as I'm calling it, is the information that obviously goes on the invoice or the estimate or a sales receipt. The product facing description would be like the description that's used by your vendor. And because when you set up the inventory items, you have the two sided capability, you would have that's where that split starts to come into play. To try to demonstrate what we're talking about, this is QuickBooks Online. We have uh, we've made up an estimate here that's got all of the client facing information on it. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to copy it to a purchase order. It's telling us here that some of the information on the estimate may not carry over to the purchase order. So if you don't use du double sided items, those items will not transfer over. Click OK and you'll see what I'm talking about. While it does capture each of the individual items, it doesn't capture the description of the other details because that was not filled in on the item itself. For desktop, in desktop you do have the ability, if you're doing an estimate, that the information itself can then transfer over onto a purchase order. So I'm going to create a brand new estimate and I'm going to purposely choose a two-sided item so I can show you what it would both look like on the estimate or the invoice and then what the flip side would look like on the purchase order because they have different descriptions to them. I will start off by doing a new transaction. I'm going to create an estimate. Choose a client. Let's do new, uh, new client this time. come through and for the product I'm going to do this sofa and this sofa as you can see here this is a description I put in already the the price for the description the name so forth and you'll see it says this is where the sales description would be displayed um, so if I was to take this and do a print preview you'll see the information I I put in now is displayed. This is where the sales description would be displayed. And I'm going to save this now so I can turn it into a purchase order as well. By turning it into a purchase order, it's going to bring over the information, but the important part is this now shows this is where the purchasing information would be displayed. It's the other side. Um, the reason this is important, for if you're coming from QuickBooks Desktop, QuickBooks Desktop takes the client-facing description, as I would call it, and it copies that directly over to a purchase order, and that is the only thing that you would see. This gives you the ability to have a message for the vendor being different than for the client. So the positive of that would be if you don't want uh, the client to see certain model numbers or certain you know distinguishing characteristics of that item you could hide that for the client but still provide it to the vendor to make sure that your order came in correct if you've got additional questions or looking for some advice feel free to leave a comment below or reach out to us directly at info at parkwaymail.com and as always here's wishing you a very successful week